Um, hi, welcome or welcome back to the Wicked Campfire Podcast. My name is Phyllis McKenzie and dare I say you look dashing today. Just stand up, go look at yourself in the mirror because woo, you look dashing. I know, I know you're wearing that hoodie. I know you're wearing that simple outfit that you've got, but you still look dashing to me. Anyway, welcome to a brand new episode here at, gosh, I almost mentioned the previous, <laughs> my previous podcast. Oh my God, now that I have two podcasts, it's quite annoying to remember which is supposed to be which. But welcome to the Wicked Campfire podcast. If you're new here, I'm glad to have new faces, voices souls around and if you're tuning back in thank you thank you so much for being a supporter and i know it seems weird i started this podcast in july and now i only have two episodes from july till today but it seems that i have stumbled upon the worst kind of electronical luck because since last year to this year, that's about a year and a half, I haven't had the least bit of luck when it comes to electronics, either my laptop or my mic. I lost my headphones, they're dead somehow. I just have to like position myself in a specific angle so that I can get even the least bit of audio. My mic, I thought it died, but I just didn't configure it right. I've somehow managed to lose two laptops one just decided to shut down the other well i think it's been at war or something if you just look at it and the way it was just making sounds like a machine like a very old old farm machine would yeah and then my phone let, let me even start mentioning my phone i've gone to buy it like four different types of phones in the past a year and a half and when i say four there weren't like the good kinds of phones they were just like devices yeah but right now i can comfortably say that i'm in a better position to record because i have myself a good laptop with me my mic's working phone's working headphones on its way because i forgot my earplugs elsewhere so i can't record without the headphones so i don't know how this audio quality will be until i get new headphones so i can reduce any background noises like the ones you'll hear right now i have annoyingly noisy neighbors but anyways today's episode is another haunting one like i mentioned when i first began this podcast the wicked camper podcast i will go through every single haunted place imaginable as a paranormal investigator as anything that you might want to call me but i will go through every single one physically and remotely all of them and i decided to start what's it called a research let's call it a research yeah and when i was doing that research of haunted places and vortexes and ley lines I stumbled upon something that I don't know if anybody else has found this out there. If you have, just hit me up on social media. I'd like to hear your thoughts about it. But I stumbled upon possible vortex or portal hotspots. And I call these locations vortexums. And uh, that will be our next topic of discussion after today's episode. But these vortexums, I presume, are telephone booths of vortexes yeah telephone booths of vortexes or cell towers of vortexes meaning the most charge will be there when you go with your k2s or emf readers there's a possibility that you'll get the most interactions to these specific locations but if you'd like to see more and understand broadly just go to the link in the description and just click our haunted maps just go on now literally it will take you less than a minute just click on it check it out i've finished the map on nebraska i have also done the one in texas ohio i was about to start with that but skipped over to the british isles and uh, that's where i'm continuing with this connection i'll try to make the connection worldwide so 
If you think there are places that I miss or maybe places that I should investigate or include in the map, please reach out. You can email me. The email will be in the description. You can also DM me. I respond to DMs or even comment on my latest post. Just comment down below what you'd like to say and I'd listen to you and I'll interact with you and no more. But before we start moving to another different topic, today's major topic would be about Alliance Theater. And Alliance Theater technically has the most haunting energy in Nebraska. That's according to me, but if you have different thoughts, just like I said, hit me up. And today's topic would be about Nebraska because when you look at the haunted map itself, Nebraska, the point that I have as the focal point of where it all starts is Alliance Theater. And then it moves to Sentinel Hall and then yada, yada, yada until we get to the end. Sentinel Hall, I mentioned it as our first episode, as like our Kickstarter episode. But today's episode will be the most important one, Alliance Theater. So what are the hauntings in Alliance Theater? What is Alliance Theater? How did it all begin? And the story behind the hauntings is actually very, very sad because it's based on a very tragic ending to this ghost. So the hauntings of Alliance Theater is all about this actress who met a very untimely end while on stage surrounded by everybody. They were just rehearsing and everything. And uh, people mentioned that a chandelier fell on her right as she was in front of the audience. So you can just imagine your death performing you have an audience, a chandelier just falls on your head. So basically, that's the story behind this ghost. But let's just circle back. We just reel it back in to the beginning of Alliance Theatre. And it takes us all the way back to 1903. And back then, it wasn't known as the Alliance Theatre. It was known as the Charter Hotel. So it started off at a, as a hotel. And later, it transitioned into a theatre for the performing arts, which was called the Imperial Theatre. And uh, in around something like 1937, it was remodeled and re renamed the Alliance Theatre, which now stays until today as the Alliance Theatre. And all the history of transitions and repurposing play are part in different aspects of the haunts of Alliance Theatre. So there may be ghosts from... 1903 when it was still the charter hotel there may be transitioned ghost when it came as the imperial theater but the most famous ghost is the actress mary that was her name mary i don't know if i can find her photo i'll try i'll try so hard to find her photo and post it in my next post on social media alongside this but when she died according to historical research that actress mary was killed on stage when a piece of lighting equipment fell on her during a performance as she was playing a part of a bride. So if you just look into that, why didn't she die at a different time? Why did she have to die in front of people? And why did she have to die the time she's playing a role of a bride? These are questions that will go on throughout this episode and coming episodes because I am pretty sure that Maybe something was out to get her when she was playing this part of a bride. Some other ghost or entity was triggered by her playing this part of a bride. And she was a really good actress. And if this is what actually happened, then she didn't deserve it because she was a nice, sweet young girl. And a lot of people attribute the haunts of Mary and they say that she can be seen roaming through the theater. So if you go to a Lions theater and you're lucky, you might end up seeing her roaming around the theater. And she's also said to keep the theater tidy because that's how she liked it. Theater being what it's supposed to be, a place where you can come and connect with the, with the audience and feel like home. So she loved having it tidy. And as people say, she's the one who keeps it tidy. Even employees have reported seeing both light and dark figures within the theater. So we can't really say for sure which is which. Like I said, maybe there's something else that caused her accident that killed her. 
maybe it wasn't just an accident that a chandelier or lighting equipment fell on her when she was on stage playing the bride. Maybe something else, a different entity was there and felt triggered. Maybe a bride that died. I don't know. I'll have answers later as we go on with our investigations. And um, they have also heard, the employees and other people, they have also heard interesting noises, including disembodied footsteps and hand clapping coming from the theater. While it's empty, you can just picture that. You're there in the theater alone. And then you just hear footsteps. And then a round of applause. Possibly you can see a standing ovation, apparition of standing ovations. You know, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they're just residues of ghosts that are there. Previous people who loved theater, maybe they cross over, come here. This is why I'm saying that there's a possibility of vortexums. And, you know, ghosts can cross over, spirits can cross over, entities can cross over from place to place. They don't necessarily have to haunt one specific place. That's why you find that different places might have similar hauntings, although these hauntings have different names, right? But back to Mary, many of the projectionists would see different things and hear and explain noises coming from the theater. And the books in the manager's office sometimes move and get relocated from their placements by themselves. So maybe, just maybe, the book's moving. It's just Mary trying to move things, trying to get everything to the way she liked it. You know, back then, people from 1937, it's quite hard to find somebody who is alive from then who remembers everything clearly. But... Maybe she had access to a lot of places in the theater and she loved seeing things in a certain arrangement or maybe she remembers things being in a certain arrangement. So if you have a cup that feels misplaced to her, she'll move it. If you'll have a book that doesn't seem to be the place where she knows it should be, it moves. Or maybe you have something that shouldn't be there and there's something else in her mind that should be there. Maybe she'll move your things. But... That's just Mary. She doesn't do horrible things. She's just a nice, friendly ghost who died tragically while performing on stage. Maybe because of a vengeful ghost or somebody who felt cheated by death and decided to kill this poor actress because she was playing a bride. That's a sad way to go. But besides that, we have Gerald Bullard, who is the owner or was the owner of the Alliance Theater. Gerald actually says that when this phenomena appear, it's just a friendly ghost. So nothing to be scared of when it comes to Mary. It's just that she died and she loves the theater. She will clean things up. She will move things. Sometimes you'll hear the standing ovations, probably because she was performing on stage without the ghost. We will never know. And one of the most iconic buildings in the city of Alliance is actually Alliance Theater. And uh, despite its vast history and the spirit of the actress, it plays a natural part in the city of Alliance because it's one of the oldest and most iconic buildings, right? Okay, so the hauntings behind Alliance Theatre, it can be or is a resemblance of a phantom of an opera tale, right? Because... When it comes to hauntings in theaters, you'll realize that it's not mostly an outside ghost. It's just an actor or an actress who tragically, tragically died in front of people while performing, while practicing, rehearsing in this case. But what I can't wrap my head around is why did Mary have to die the way she died? It's unreasonable, right? Because... You can't tell me that after years of this place existing that one day, one random day, a chandelier would just fall on your head. And mind you, everybody, everybody before you go on the theater stage, you have to prep everything, you have to go through everything and show everything is all right. So it's quite uncommon to have a lighting equipment from the roof fall on you and end up killing you unless it was cut or not hung up properly but in this case it didn't happen during practice 
it didn't happen during rehearsals, right? Because they rehearse every day on stage. It happened in front of the audience. The night she had the play, the night she had to be the bride. That's when she had to have a tragic end. And we have this employee who worked in the Alliance Theatre before. Her name's Carol Crow. I don't know if I've butchered her name, but Carol Erickson Crow. And she worked in that theatre for like seven years. And she says that one night she was just there because she was the nighttime custodian after the business was closed, right? And most of the time, she was the only person in the building. And guess what? She also got her own fair share of experiences with Mary. And I quote, this is what she says, that some of the experiences that I had was hearing a lot of different noises that weren't the normal the the noises of the theater and thinking that it was probably Mary who had died during one of her performances. Supposedly, she roams the theater. That's been a legend for a long time. I think she felt sorry for me because I had to clean up such a mess. And you might be wondering, what does Carol mean by this? You know, a nighttime custodian, may, when you're left in a theater, you have to clean up the mess that's left there, popcorns, spilt things on the floor, any prop that was left behind, you have to keep it in a safe place so that when the crew comes in the morning they can find things and when morning comes when anybody walks into the theater it's like nobody was there the previous night and carol said that she had a little experiment to the ghost of mary one late night so she was trying to experiment and see if she can actually lure out mary and this is what i said and this is what she said i mean and i quote i swept up a pile of popcorn and purposefully Put it under a chair that one wouldn't sit on to see if it would be there the next night. Oddly enough, it was gone. It was it was during a week when it wasn't busy. I assumed Mary had cleaned it up for me. That is what Carol did. And I'm sure somebody out there listening to this might be like, okay, if you have a pile of popcorn in the theater, couldn't somebody else clean it up but she did this when it wasn't a like a regular time for people to be at the theater and it wasn't as busy as it normally is and she had the popcorn on a seat that people generally don't enjoy sitting on you know there are places when you sit in the theater you can't see a part of the stage quite nicely as the rest or it's a blind spot when it comes to the stage so that's where she kept the popcorn and when she came back the next night, it wasn't there. And no, theaters are dark. So there's no possibility that somebody could have seen that and decided to clean a pile of dirty unknown popcorn off the seat. So whether the Alliance Theater is haunted by the ghost of Mary or not, the theater makes the bricks in downtown Alliance shine as uniquely as it is, right? Because it's an old building, once it was restructured, it was never changed, it stayed as it was. Because I'll put a picture side by side of Alliance Theatre back in 1938 and Alliance Theatre today, you won't see much of a difference. It retained its natural structure, it retained its other features that it had when it was repurposed to be Alliance Theatre. But what I'm pretty sure of is that Mary didn't just die out of mere circumstance. She didn't. She didn't just die out of mere coincidence that the chandelier or lighting equipment from the roof fell on her. My theory is, and I'll try to prove it as much as I can, my theory is that while she was performing, well, they were just there existing in the Alliance Theatre. They were unaware that there were other entities within the Alliance Theatre because, mind you, like I mentioned, it wasn't established in 1937. The theatre had its start in 1903. So it had 
30 years prior, 30 years plus prior, and between that period of time, things would have happened. Things could have happened, tragedy might have happened, portals might have been opened elsewhere, and somehow crossings began, or somehow ghosts already existed there, and one way or another, there was a vengeful ghost. There was a vengeful ghost that night that caused her death. And there are three possibilities of this vengeful ghost. One, probably just angry that Mary got to play the part of the bride. Maybe it was another actress that died or something like that. Two, maybe this was a bride that got cheated by death. She felt that she could have had her happily ever after but couldn't because she died on her wedding day and three this is just a ghost that didn't love theater i don't know i don't know but i presume that maybe this ghost just didn't love anything to do with theaters and decided to off with mary because she got all the applause and everything and this ghost didn't but one thing i know is that that was never an accident. That was never just a oopsie daisy. She died because a chandelier fell on her head. But I'll get to more of that in the coming episodes. I'll f- try. I'll try to find a trace of how the haunting of Alliance Theatre began. Because, like I mentioned, in Sentinel Hall, the haunting at Sentinel Hall and the haunting at Captain Bailey House is quite similar. Because the people there almost died in a similar way and they have hauntings of a similar or somewhat similar ghost. And when you look at the haunted map, the connection that I've made is that from Alliance Theatre, any ghost that passes through Alliance Theatre will have to go in two different ways. Either cross over to Captain Bailey House or go a little further south and go to Sentinel Hall, which... It's on the same line. It's I'm trying to find the exact latitude there and trying to figure out how there could be a connection between the two, how the portals could cross each other. But there is a vortex between the two before you get to Sentinel Hall and Captain Bailey House. And that's why I was saying that there's a possibility that the hauntings at Sentinel Hall and Captain Bailey House could be one and the same thing because entities or spirits have been known to haunt different places They are the one entity, but trying to haunt in different forms. And when you have a very intense paranormal investigation, you realize that they will actually open up and tell you that, oh, yeah, I can be in two places at once. So I can be at Captain Bailey House and be at Sentinel Hall all at the same time, trying to, not even trying to, actually doing shit all over. But until I get to the Captain Bailey House, I'll try to unpack all about Alliance Theatre. So wherever you are listening to this, whether you're from Nebraska, whether you've been to Alliance Theatre, whether you have heard the stories of Alliance Theatre, whether you know any information about Mary, hit me up, email, social media, anywhere. I'll listen. You can even scream. Scream. I'll probably hear your energy and hear what you're trying to say. But I'd like to hear your input on all this. So just check out our latest post immediately after I post this, immediately after you hear this. Just go on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Check our latest post. It won't be pinned, but it will be the latest post. Links will be in the description as always. But until then, stay spooky, stay safe. Try not to get haunted, okay? Please, I beg you. (laughs) But till then, bye.